Doesn't it drive you crazy when you're watching flight footage and the pilot is constantly turning left and never right or vice versa? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can get your radio to warn you when you do it too much. Check it out. Left, 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 left. You guys don't, uh, you guys don't watch, the jo you don't like the Jonas Brothers? Well, how about uh, Beyonce? <laughs> I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna need to do is make the sound files that are gonna play when we need to turn left or turn right. And I've done that here in Adobe Audition. You can do it in just about any audio editor, and there are plenty of free ones out there if that's what you prefer to do. The key thing you need to know is that when you export that file, it needs to be 32 kilohertz, not 48 kilohertz, which is what will be the default for most modern editors. And it needs to be mono, not stereo, and it needs to be 16-bit. Uh, once you do that, it should be able to play on the radio. I have selected two entertaining <laughs> sound clips. You could use your own voice, or if you want, you could copy-paste this one. Here, I'm gonna give it to you, and you can do whatever you need to do to get that into your radio. <clears throat> Here we go. Turn left. You're turning right too much. Turn left. There's a shorter one. Turn left. Another right turn. Ugh. All right, now I'll give you another one. Turn right. You're turning left too much. Do you not know how to turn right? Turn right. <sighs> another left turn. Good, great, I love them. Hey there folks, Joshua from the future here. You also have to name the files uh, with no more than eight characters before the extension. So my original name of turnright.wave was too long and I couldn't find it in the menu. So I had to shorten it to turnerit and turnlift. Once you got those files, the next thing to do is to get them onto your radio. I'm gonna go ahead and power up my radio. And I'm Don't going... Learn something today. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna plug in here. And I'm gonna select USB storage. And when I do that, I'll get new... Uh, I'll get my SD card contents here on my desktop. By the way, I've got a Bardwell voice sound pack. You see what my radio said, you're gonna learn something today. I got a whole Bardwell voice pack. There's a link in the video description if you wanna get it. It's free, you can just put it on your radio. Uh, we're gonna go into sounds. We're gonna go into EN, that's English. And I am not sure whether this should go in system or whether it should go in sounds backslash EN. So let's just put it in sounds slash EN. We'll just copy that onto my SD card. Next, we gotta go into the radio and we gotta go through the whole process of setting this logic up. And the first thing I need to do is notice when the behavior that I'm trying to interact with is occurring. And we're gonna do that using logical switches. So I'm gonna press the model key and then I'm going to page over to the logical switches uh, screen. I'm gonna create a new logical switch by pressing the jog dial and the function is going to be a greater than X. V1 is going to be the thing we're looking at, and V2 is going to be the thing that it needs to be greater than. And the thing I'm looking at is gonna be my stick position. I wanna notice when I'm turning left or right. So I can easily do that by just pushing the aileron stick to the right, and it will autofill the aileron input, okay? So the aileron is going to be greater than some value. And the value is going to determine how far I need to deflect the stick for this to trigger. So I'm just going to set a value of like 20. Like 100 is full stick deflection and 0 is center stick. So let's just set a value of 20, which is just a little bit of deflection. We could change that threshold as much as we want. And if we back back out here to the logical switches screen, we can see that when I push the aileron to the right, that channel becomes uh, colored in or bold, depending on what radio you've got. And we can see about how far I need to deflect the stick to get that to happen. Now, if you wanna like change that threshold to like 45 or 50, which would be a half stick travel is 50, then that would only detect sharp turns like snap rolls. In fact, that seems like a good idea because like we do little turns to the left or right, but it's really those snap rolls that we're always overlooking and, and only going one direction. So let's actually make this not just 20, let's make it like, let's make it like 60. Now, if you take a look here, 
Little deflections don't have any effect, but if, as I get closer to, there we go. That's like close, well, it's 60% stick deflection, 60, right? But that's much further, and it's only going to trigger when I really do sharp rolls. Now we're going to do the same thing for going left, and I can easily do that by copying and then pasting LO1 to LO2. We'll then choose edit, and I'm going to change the function to a less than x. Oh, I guess that copy paste got cleared out when I changed the function. That's a shame. That's kind of a waste. It's not that useful. Uh, V1 is going to be the aileron again, which I'll just move the aileron stick to fill that in, and V2 is going to be negative 60. So now we've got a situation where LO2 becomes activated when I roll to the left, and LO1 becomes activated when I roll to the right. Now we can detect the behavior that we're looking for. Next, we have to respond to that behavior. And what we want to do is we want to count or track how often I'm turning one direction or the other. And so what we could do is we could keep a counter of how often we turn left and how often we turn right. And then we could like subtract one from the other to see which is bigger. But there's a computer programming trick for, for simplifying that process. And it's basically when you go left, you add one. When you go right, you subtract one. And then whether the number, the sum, is greater than or less than zero tells you which one you've done more of. You don't get to know the total number of times you've done it, but we don't really care about that. Or maybe you do, but we're, that would be way more complicated, and we're not going to do it that direction. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press the model key, and we're going to page to the special functions. And special functions has the ability to add or subtract a number from a variable in response to a condition. So I'm going to add a new special function, and the switch is going to be LO1. Instead of flipping a physical switch, we're going to use LO1, which becomes true when we turn to the right, to, uh, to trigger this. And you could scroll through this list to find LO1, but on a touchscreen radio, you can just... You can just tap right here on the bottom. That is logical switches, and LO1 is right there. Now, the function is going to be to adjust a global variable. The global variable, we're going to use GV1. We, I'm not using global variables for anything else, so if you are using GV1 for something else, then you would just pick a different number. But we'll use GV1, and our mode is going to be increment slash decrement, and we're going to add 1 to the global variable and enable that. And we've done that. We're going to do the same thing, copy and paste, and we're going to edit that. And the switch in this case is going to be LO2. So that's going to be left turns. We're going to adjust GV1 by a value of minus 1. OK? So far, so good. So let's back out and let's go to the global variable screen and we should be able to see what GV1 does. So here's GV1 right up here and you can see if I turn left, it goes minus one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I go to the right, it goes the other direction. Great. So now by looking at GV1, we can determine whether we are turning left or right more often. We're not quite there yet. The next thing we need to do is detect a threshold where we want to give a warning that we've been doing it too much and we need to go the other direction. So we're going to press the model key again and we're going to go back to the logical switches. And we're going to set up another logical switch. And this switch is going to be A is greater than X and V1, the thing that we're looking at to see if it's greater, is going to be uh, GV1. And I don't know where the global variables are in this list. I'm not sure. I think you can, I'm not sure you can get there except just by scrolling through the list. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But if we scroll all the way down the list, we will eventually find GV1. So if GV1 is greater than, uh, well, how, how many times do we want to turn right before then we got to turn left and get a warning? Let's say three. Let's say I can do three right turns before I for force myself to do a left turn. If A is greater than X, GV1, then LO3 will become true. And we're going to do that again. And what's going to be A is less than X. Again, we want GV1. GV1 is less than 3, negative 3. Then it will become true. So now we have two logical switches that tell us whether we have turned right too often or whether we've turned left too often. 
And if I bounce back to the left a couple times, there we go, LO4 becomes true. If I bounce to the right, LO3 becomes true. There we go. And when neither of them is true, then we are balanced. Okay, now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna play that sound file when this condition becomes true. And the way to do that is with a special function. So we're gonna press model, we're gonna to go to the special functions tab or screen. We're gonna add a special function. The switch is going to be LO3. When LO3 becomes true, we have turned right too many times and we need to turn left. So what we're gonna do in that case is we're going to play a track and the track we're gonna play is, oh my God, so annoying to have to scroll through this to find it, but what can you do? So I'm gonna scroll through this list until I find turn left. That's my audio track there. I've turned right too many times, so I need to turn left. And we'll repeat that one time. And we're gonna do the same thing Let's see if a copy paste can shorten our work a little bit. The switch is going to be LO4 and we're going to choose the track turn right. So let's go back to our global uh, variables and we will look at that global variable and we'll see how this works. Let me turn the volume up as well on my radio. It's a little distorted. I wonder if I need to turn the gain down on that file just a little bit, but uh, it does <laughs> it does do its thing. <laughs> That's not going to get old. <laughs> now, this is pretty cool, but there's still a couple of things we need to do to make this really perfect. And one of them is we need the ability to reset the counter. Like if I just keep turning right 27 times in a row, then I'm gonna be, my counter is gonna be up at like 27 and it's never gonna get back down to zero to tell me I'm turning left. So what I'd really like to do is reset the counter each time it triggers and go back to the middle. And it should really only accrue when I'm armed and it should really reset itself when I disarm. And in just a second, I'm gonna show you how to do those things. But before I do, can I take a second to tell you about my Patreon page? Patreon is a website where you can support me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you. A monthly reoccurring subscription like this is so important for creators like me who, who, who can rely on it and don't have to sort of pray that the YouTube algorithm doesn't screw us over this month. Even a small donation of $2 a month is super, super valuable. If today's the day that you feel like I've earned it, then there's a link down in the video description, go subscribe. If I haven't earned it yet, I hope you keep watching the content. I'm gonna keep making the content and maybe that day will come. And the first thing I wanna tackle is the only doing it when I'm armed. And this should be pretty easy uh, because what I can do is I can go to logical switches and I can edit and add an and condition to the logical switch that detects whether the stick is going left or right. And what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna flip my arm switch into the armed position and it will read SF up. And now this will only work when the switch is in that position. And I'm gonna do the same thing here for LO2. We're gonna go and switch and switch to SF up. And so there we go. Uh, and now these, the global variable will only accrue when I'm armed, good. The other thing we wanna do is have a reset. And a simple thing we could do is we could go to special functions and uh, we could say that when a new special function, when LO3 becomes true, our function is going to be to set, no, set is for the timer, sorry. We're gonna adjust the global variable to a value of zero, perfect. And when LO4, becomes true, we're going to adju uh, adjust the global variable to a value of zero. So what that's going to do, again, let's go back to the global variable screen. What that's going to do is 
watch the variable here. First of all, if I put the switch in the disarm position, nothing happens. When I arm, now the counter begins accruing. But as soon as it plays the audio, it resets back to zero. And now I can start making some left turns and some right turns. And yeah, that's kind of nice. The other thing I think we ought to do is we ought to make it so that when we disarm, it resets the counter. So we start over from scratch each time. And we can do that again with another special functions, a special function, which is going to be edit switch. I'm going to put my arm switch in the disarm position, switch SF down, and it's going to be the same thing. Adjust global variable one to a value of zero. And that means that whenever we disarm, we'll also reset to zero and start from scratch on each flight. And now finally, you too can become an ambi-turner and turn both left and right instead of constantly turning one direction all the time. If you thought this video was super cool, I've got another video uh, that's going to be great for people who want to use... See, these trim switches are kind of useless on multi-rotors. You can use them to, like, cycle through a bunch of parameters. It's especially useful if you've got a TBS Tango, which has momentary switches on the back that a lot of people don't find to be that useful, and you can turn them basically into rotary switches. It uses some of the functions I used here, but in a slightly different way. I'm going to put a card on screen that'll link you to that, and uh, if you're into this kind of advanced OpenTX programming, then I think you're going to love it. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.